Today we look at NBA trades with a different spin on them. In the past, we've looked at crazy NBA trades that almost happened. Well, today we look at the trades that actually happened and went either terribly bad or much worse than a trade offer they could have taken at the same time, which looking back gives us 10 times NBA teams made the wrong trade. Let's first start with a great example. This season, the Los Angeles Lakers became one of the biggest failed super teams in the history of the NBA by not even making the playoffs with three star players. But it didn't even have to be that way. With just AD and LeBron, they won a championship. At Russell Westbrook to the mix and they missed the playoffs. And that's not good news when you see the actual trade that they made versus what they could have done last offseason. Because the trade they made was taking Russell Westbrook in exchange for Contavious Caldwell Pope, Kyle Kuzma, Montrez Harrell, and a first round pick, giving up their depth and future assets. While there were actually a couple of other deals on the table that they could have made and the ball was in their court to do it, but they chose not to. For instance, they had a trade set up of Kyle Kuzma and Caldwell Pope for Buddy Heald that Kyle Kuzma said was a done deal. But then at the last minute, the Lakers pulled out and sent him to Washington instead. And then of course the Lakers needed shooting all year long, so this would have been a perfect deal. And it would have been a fair one too. The Kings get a young Kuzma in exchange, LA gets healed who's a little older but ready to win now. And of course the Lakers also came extremely close to signing DeMar DeRozan, to the point where DeRozan said, I thought it was a done deal and we were going to figure the contract out. This one wasn't even a trade, it was a flat out free agent signing, and they flopped on this one too because they didn't want to give DeRozan an option on his third year, so instead he went to the Bulls and became a top 5 MVP candidate all year long. So this is the five they could have had, and this is the five they ended up with because they made a couple of wrong moves on that Russell Westbrook trade, and now they've been stuck with them. A really interesting trade that went wrong comes from the Cleveland Cavaliers and Milwaukee Bucks. Of course, back in 2017, Kyrie Irving wasn't happy with the direction the Cavs were headed, so he demanded a trade in the offseason. And there were a ton of trades that were proposed, but the other team didn't agree on. But the Milwaukee Bucks actually proposed this trade, and all the Cavs had to do was accept it, and it was done. But instead, they traded him to the Celtics for Isaiah Thomas, Jay Crowder, and anti Zizic and a first round pick, which of course would be a disaster with Isaiah's injuries and all, and it didn't work out on the other side of things for Boston and Kyrie either, so it's safe to say that the Cavs should have made this Bucks trade, which would have sent Kyrie there in exchange for Malcolm Brogdon, Chris Middleton, and a first round pick. Now obviously with how things turned out, it's good for the Bucks that this deal didn't go through. Kyrie Irving's had problems for years, and Giannis got his championship thanks to the help of Middleton. But for Cleveland, they definitely made the worst trade in hindsight. At the time though, I get it, Brogdon did just win Rookie of the Year, but he was still a rookie and LeBron was trying to win now, and Chris Middleton hadn't really made a name for himself yet. But at the same time, the very next season, Chris would average a career-high 20 a game, then make the All-Star team in 2018, while Brogdon continued to progress and prove himself the years following the trade proposal. But speaking of Milwaukee, they won in this scenario, but not so much back in 2012, because that was the year they were ready to move on from their former first overall pick, Andrew Bogut, and they wanted a guard in return. And the Warriors needed a big man to pair with one of their guards, so they offered to trade Steph Curry for Andrew Bogut, but Milwaukee said no, because they wanted Monte Ellis instead, and they got him. The trade went through, and after one full season, Monte left and signed with the Dallas Mavericks. So by 2015, the Bucks' new star was playing for the Mavericks, and Steph Curry and Andrew Bogut were celebrating winning a championship on the Warriors. So Milwaukee definitely made the wrong decision, and I couldn't even begin to explain how different the league today would be had this went through. Obviously, the Warriors probably wouldn't have had any major success since then. We would have never seen the Splash Brothers or the Warriors dynasty come to be. No Snake KD, but since the Bucks got Giannis 15th overall in 2013, and it was just one year after this trade, and Steph still wasn't a superstar yet, there's a good chance they still draft him, and maybe we're seeing this duo play and dominating the league right now. The most current wrong decision that we've seen in the NBA went into full effect just recently, well, kind of. After Jimmy Butler led the way for the Miami Heat to beat the James Harden, Joel and beat 76ers in the playoffs, and yelled, Tobias Harris over me? It takes you back to the 2018 and 19 season, where Jimmy Butler played like a superstar in the 76ers, made the team better, and led them to one shot away from the NBA Finals. And then he just goes and joins the Miami Heat. While Philly signs Tobias Harris instead to a five-year, $180 million contract that offseason. Which makes it look like the team chose to keep Tobias Harris and give him a max contract instead of Jimmy Butler, which would make this one of the worst decisions of all time. But actually, it wasn't really the case. And it's not really clear why Jimmy Butler yelled that in the tunnel, because it was said that it was actually Ben Simmons that didn't like playing with Butler, because it meant that he had to play off the ball more. And he didn't like how much Jimmy was controlling the team. While Philly was actually willing to pay both Jimmy and Tobias in the offseason, so they didn't really keep Tobias over him at all. Now what he really should have been yelling was why they kept Ben Simmons over him. That would have been a lot more fitting, especially considering the fact that Ben pretty much made the team trade him away and then became a terrible player. It would have been hard to do that at the time, but now looking back, instead of signing and trading Jimmy Butler for Josh Richardson, Philadelphia should have kept Jimmy and found a trade for Ben Simmons instead. Because if this year they
they would have had Jimmy Embiid and potentially James Harden, they would have had actual championship potential. And speaking of championships, this time it was a player and not a team that probably cost himself a couple for a bad trade decision. Because Kevin Garnett's Timberwolves contract was expiring. So for him, it was either trade him to a team he wanted to go or let his deal expire and he just leaves anyways and they get nothing in return. So he pretty much had power to be traded to wherever he wanted in this situation. Now, originally the trade that actually happened was when he was sent to Boston in exchange for Al Jefferson, Ryan Gomes, Sebastian Telfair, Gerald Green, Theo Ratliff, and two first round picks. And there's nothing to complain about. He made a big three in Boston and won one championship in his very first season there. But he won one championship. In any other scenario, this would have been okay and no regrets to be had. But that changes if I told you the other trade on the table was to the Lakers to team up with Prime Kobe in 2007. And actually, both teams agreed to a deal to send Kevin Garnett to the Lakers in exchange for Lamar Odom and Andrew Bynum. But KG wanted to have a face-to-face -face talk with Kobe and Phil Jackson first. But Kobe was overseas in China with Nike for a month. And within that time, KG decided to just go join the Celtics. Of course, it all still worked out for Kobe, winning two championships, and it all worked out for the Celtics, seeing that they got a title and avoided getting Lamar Odom and Andrew Bynum. The real loser here is Kevin Garnett, because if Kobe won two titles without him, these two in their prime could have possibly gotten three, which would have gave Kobe his second three-peat. So because KG got impatient and Kobe didn't even know what was happening, we never got to see these two team up just because of that Nike tour in China that Kobe was on. And of course, KG wasn't the only superstar Kobe Bryant almost teamed up with. We all remember when Chris Paul joined Kobe and the Lakers for about two hours. The trade actually went through. Both teams agreed on it, and it was happening. But then the league vetoed it, and instead Chris Paul joined the Clippers, and in return the Hornets got Eric Gordon, Chris Kamen, Al Farouk Aminu, and a draft pick, which turned out to be Austin Rivers. Now in this case, I feel like the league made the wrong decision here for the Pelicans, because the original deal of receiving Lamar Odom, Kevin Martin, Luis Scola, Goran Dragic, and a first round pick was a lot better. Listen, I get the Hornets were trying to rebuild and all that, and all these guys were older, but these were much better trade assets than what they ended up with anyway. Like I said, it's not the Hornets' fault because they accepted it, it's David Stern's fault for declining the trade and having the team get a worse deal. Now believe it or not, sticking with this Chris Paul trade, before any of that went down, and it originally came out that Chris wanted to be traded, the Warriors offered New Orleans both of Steph Curry and Clay Thompson back in 2012. And you can't make this stuff up. It was Clay's rookie season and Curry's ankle injury year, so I get why they said no, but again, looking back, this was the original real life deal. And this is what they could have had. The effect that trade would have had would be hard to match, but this next one comes close. Back in 2012, Vince Carter was at his peak, dominating on the Raptors. Well, the Dallas Mavericks wanted to switch things up, so they offered to trade both Steve Nash and Dirk Nowitzki for Vince Carter and Antonio Davis. And the Raptors were the ones to say no because they didn't want two unproven players. <sighs> Alright, I need a minute. If I was the Raptors, I would have thrown up watching Steve and Dirk win three MVPs from 2005 to 2007 after this. I guess it makes sense at the time though, Steve Nash was only a first time All-Star in 2012. He was just starting to get into the rhythm of things in the NBA, and even Dallas traded him a couple years later. And also in 2012, Dirk had also become a first time All-Star, and even though he looked more like a superstar at the time, I could see how it was a risky move. But all of this to say that the Raptors turned down this trade, and instead two years later, took a deal of Alonzo Mourning, Aaron Williams, Eric Williams, and two first round picks. And that's what makes this one of the worst missed opportunity trades in NBA history. But back in 2010, the Cavs had one last playoff run with LeBron, and they pretty much knew that. They had one last chance to make him happy and convince him to stay. So they made a deal with the Phoenix Suns to bring in Amari Stoudemire in exchange for JJ Hickson and Zadrunas Ilgauskas, but then changed their mind and backed out, and instead traded Ilgauskas for Anton Jameson, which was definitely the wrong move. They were already getting a steal for prime Amari Stoudemire that would have brought James another all-star big man and a real second option. I mean, originally, Amari stayed on the Suns and helped them to the Western Conference Finals that year, so imagine what he would have helped LeBron do. And just think about it, if Amari and LeBron James worked, maybe they beat Boston in the second round that year, then go on to beat the Magic in the Eastern Conference Finals thanks to Stoudemire matching up with Howard. That would have meant we actually got to see a Kobe Bryant-LeBron James Finals matchup. But that's a big what if. Even if this trade went down, I think there still would have been a big chance that he left the team, but to even have a chance at that Finals run would have been worth it. As for the reason the Cavs backed out of that Amari Stoudemire trade, they wanted to have JJ Hickson to build around in case LeBron left, so they kept him. Then traded him the next year anyways for Omri Caspi and a first round pick. So I, I don't even know. Like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed. I'm out.